Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm preparing to paint this watercolour scene here. As you can see, I've got it drawn out on my Hallamool block. This is the reference photo I'm actually going to be using by a wonderful lady called Gillian Metcalf. And what I want to do now is test out the colours that I want to use to create all those different shades on the painting. So you can see I've got quite a selection here. If any of you are feeling weary after Christmas and struggling to get back into painting, this is a great way to break down that little bit of fear, get yourself going again and start having some fun. So I'm using a piece of practice paper rather than my actual painting. So I've given this practice paper a good spray with clean water and now I'm just splashing on some of the golds and the browns that I want to start to build onto the paper. The beauty of this is you can splash the paint, you can use a brush to pull it around and what will happen obviously when it hits the wet areas it's going to spread and if it stays in the dry area it will stay as a speckle. This way you can start to build different colours in and what you can also check is how the different colours work with each other. So there's that lovely acid yellow that I'm going to want for some of the grass. And now I can see when I put other colours with it how it's going to work. So this is a nice shade I'm going to try to do some sort of browns, grey browns, which I'm hoping are going to go, be good for the stonework because I want texture. As you can see, this paper has got a slight tooth. It is not paper, which means it hasn't been pressed. So using the side of this brush, I can actually pull the paint across and it catches and grazes those areas and gives texture. Obviously we'll need darker shadows and here I'm adding in some Prussian blue, I'm not using black because black will deaden your painting and very often shadow isn't pure black at all, it's shades of blue, green and even purple. And this is just an exercise to loosen up, to get your confidence back, to start moving your paint again and enjoying some of those colours. I've decided this year I'm going to try and do some more muted paintings. I'm prone to doing very bright pictures, I love bright colours. But it's nice to also use muted shades. So what I'm trying to do is stick to a smaller palette and try to pick paintings or interpret paintings using those colours. So adding in some of this beautiful quinacridone yellow, which actually changes from a golden orange to an acid yellow. And then I'm using a sword brush, which is a very unusual shape, but it means I can really add sort of interesting marks. Remember brushes can use marks to make their impressions. And now I'm adding some turquoise, a few bits of turquoise spatter and a little bit of uh, ultramarine because that's what I'm going to be using for the sky and for the sea. So it all blends into the final picture. And again, dropping in into different areas. What you'll notice now is that some areas have started to dry. So this is great fun for working with damp areas rather than completely wet and that will behave slightly differently. So this gets you back into the practice of working with those different levels, wet, damp and dry paper. Using a fine liner brush, I can start to pull paint into different areas in very fine lines and also use it to drop colour in. Adding a little bit of the turquoisey shade in here because A, I love turquoise and B, I want to use that in some of the, the sort of sky and sea areas. I'm quite happy with the way that these colours are actually working together. I hope you can see that there is nothing that is jarring with its neighbour or anything that looks out of place or that when it's mixed together has created an unpleasant colour. This is important because if you do happen to mix your colours on your painting and you decide you don't like them, it's a little bit difficult to take them out and you might not realise, especially if they've dried, that it's actually too late to do that. The other thing is a good practice of leaving some negative space, some white gaps and making sure that you've got a variation and a balance of colours. So you can see where I've put the turquoise, I'm actually putting it in different areas just to balance that out.
I do like to add a few little bits of sort of twiddle or you could see them as branches if this was a tree or little bits of twigs in a, a sort of bouquet of flowers. And I will go in in a little while and just add, when the painting has dry or nearly dried, a few more extra little bits just to emphasise different branches or different bits to join areas and also little bits of shadow under some of the areas too. So you can see there where I dropped that dark blue in, that's created a lovely dark area there. And here we go, adding in a few little darker spots. You can see that that then gives interest and emphasis to other areas. Again, just adding a few more little bits of interest. You can stop at any time, obviously. Once you've worked out whether your colours are going to work for you, then you can stop. Or you can just keep going until you're happy and just enjoy the process. Okay, so here we are, a little bit of a close-up for you to see. The colours, I think, have worked really nicely. They have blended together really nicely and look really pretty. And I'm just going to check them now against my reference photo and see that I've got, yeah, I have got a nice shadow colour, I've got a stone colour, I've got the greens, and I've got that beautiful yellow, that we saw in the, the sort of grassland of that photograph. So I'm really happy with that practice. I hope that this will give you an idea of something you can do before you start a painting, just to build your confidence, to get you back into that practice. You can see the shaded areas that I've put in here, added little bits to give depth. Have a go, it will free up and loosen your watercolour painting, and I'm sure that you'll find the whole exercise to be great fun. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep painting. I shall look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.